Episode 34, Don't Want to Mate Anymore. Carrying Blair on his back, Lucius flew to the top of a steep cliff. The horde of behemoths roared under the cliff, their roars resounding throughout the forests and causing the tree branches to shake, making the startled birds take flight. Lucius slanted his wings and let the female on his back slowly glide down, then gazed at her with bated breath. This beautiful female whom he had peeked at from a distance countless times looked even more stunning up close. Her fair skin was like the flawless snow deep in the mountains, even softer and tender than other females in their infant days. It was like she had grown up sealed among fresh flowers. Her exquisite face looked pale, yet it made her look like a frail beauty whom one couldn't help but yearn to bring her all the best things on earth. She was such a perfect female. Yet there was a heartbreaking flaw in her body. That was the snake tattoo on her left ankle, proof she had been violated by a feral beast. Lucius used his beak to gently nudge at her body. Blair furrowed her brows in pain, She had yet to open her eyes, and her body first shrunk away. Lucius hurriedly transformed back into a human before lifting Blair up and reassuring her, It's okay now. The feral beast isn't here. Blair opened her eyes to see the unfamiliar face of a man. Startled, she struggled. She then recalled this was the eagle beast man who had been trying to save her all this while, and her body started to relax. Thank you. Blair said in a raspy and feeble voice. Lucius's cold expression changed, a hint of shock in his eyes. You don't blame me? Blame you for what? Blair was surprised by the question. I was the one who made you go through so much suffering. You even nearly died from exhaustion because of me. Lucius's handsome face wore a dark expression, and his voice was filled with self-reproach. Blair managed to smile and said, Why should I blame you when you did all that to save me? You're so clever to have come up with this idea. After Blair finished speaking, she realized that the eagle beast man's gaze suddenly became very strange. Perhaps because he was an eagle beast man, his gaze was sharp. She could feel his hot gaze piercing through her body. My name is Blair. What's yours? Feeling uncomfortable from being stared at, Blair tried to find something to talk about. My name is Lucius, he replied right away. And then they fell back into silence. Females were cherished from the time they were born. To have done something like dropping an egg on her beautiful head, Lucius was prepared for this female to hold a grudge against him forever. He hadn't expected this female to not only not blame him, but also praise him for being clever. Lucius felt like he was dreaming. The wind on the cliff howled loudly. Blair lowered her eyes, her gaze falling upon her chest, and her body instantly shivered. She laid a hand over her left chest, feeling the beating of her heart, as well as a dull pain. She didn't die, even after Stephen's long teeth pierced right through her chest. Stephen clearly said he would let her go, But why did he suddenly bite her? What's more, it's such a sensitive spot. Was he trying to leave her a deep impression with an imprint that reeked of death? If that was his intention, Blair admitted Stephen had succeeded in doing so. She swore she would never forget the terror she felt when she thought she was going to die. Lucius thought Blair was feeling cold, so he gently set her down on the ground. Stay here and don't move. I'll bring over several rocks to block the wind. Blair nodded her head at him. Lucius held Blair and let her lie down flat on the ground before transforming into his eagle form and flying away. Lucius used his claws to pick up three stones that were each taller than a human. When he returned, he placed the stones around Blair, then placed branches thick with leaves on top. Just like that, he created a simple shelter. He then used leaves to collect some water, which he fed to Blair. Some color returned to Blair's face. She used her arms to support herself as she sat up with much difficulty and asked, Lucius, do you have any news on Roger? He's a leopard. 
Before Lucius could respond, the roar of a leopard came from behind them. Roger charged into the shelter and tackled Blair to the ground. He then furiously licked her face. Blair winced in pain due to the sharpness of his tongue. Roger then recalled that licking Blair with his tongue caused her skin to turn red and resisted the urge to do so. He lay on top of her as he transformed back into a human. I missed you so much. I can finally hold you. Roger brought his head to Blair's face and lovingly rubbed against it. Lucius sensibly transformed into an eagle and stood on the edge of the cliff with his back turned toward them as he looked down in embarrassment. Blair nudged Roger. You know you're heavy, right? You'll crush me. Roger obediently got up, carrying Blair with him. He then placed her on his lap. How did you find us? Blair asked curiously. I followed the horde of behemoths. They were at the bottom of the cliff, so I figured you would be at the top. Roger affectionately wrapped his arms around Blair. He really had missed her. He then took a huge whiff of her body's natural scent. Did that snake take advantage of you? Let me see. Roger then let go of Blair and nervously scanned her body with his eyes. He was initially happy, but when his eyes landed on the snake tattoo on her ankle, his face stiffened. Blair felt sad when she thought about Stephen. She covered her left breast with her hand and didn't say a word. She couldn't tell Roger that Stephen had bitten her chest. He would definitely rip off her clothes to check. Roger hugged Blair tightly and whined childishly. I want to be your male too. What? What too? Blair brought a hand to her forehead. Can we talk about this dating and mating stuff after we get back to the village? Roger pointed at Blair's foot, his golden eyes turning red. You have his tattoo on your body. I want to leave my tattoo on your body, too. Blair followed Roger's finger and looked down at her foot. She was shocked. Since when did she get a tattoo? And why did it look so much like Stephen? This is a mate's animal tattoo? Blair guessed. Yes. Roger found it odd that Blair would ask such a basic question, but he still gave her an affirmative answer. He grabbed her hand and asked, Can we copulate once your body's in a better condition? I want to become your male. Color further drained from Blair's face. That meant she and Stephen had already made it? She was already a married woman? Oh my God. Mom and Dad will kill me if they find out. Can we? Roger continued to press her. No! Blair screamed, her head shaking wildly like a drum-shaped rattle. Don't even think about it! A look of panic washed over Roger's face. Why? Blair tightly covered her chest with her arms and looked at Roger with fear in her eyes. It hurts. I just don't want anyone. So in this world, mating involves the male biting the female's chest? Blair wondered. At this moment, she felt a sense of respect towards the females of this world. They each had so many males. They were so brave. Roger's panicked expression was replaced with a relaxed one. So that was what she meant. He thought she didn't like him. I heard it only hurts when females do it for the first time. It doesn't hurt after that, Roger said as he grabbed onto Blair. How could biting her flesh not hurt? In any case, Blair didn't believe him. She feared that Roger would suddenly pounce on her like how Stephen did and struggle to get off his body. I don't want to mate with anyone for the time being. Blair, Roger was about to retort when Lucius walked over to the shelter and grabbed his wrist tightly. You're going too far, Lucius stated in a monotonous voice glaring at Roger. As Roger looked at Lucius, who had three animal stripes on his face, he grew wary and secretly tried to take his hand back. However, Lucius's hand was as steady as a rock, and Roger could not budge at all. The atmosphere between the two suddenly became tense. Blair took the opportunity to get up from between Roger's legs and sit on the other side of the shelter. I think we should focus on figuring out how to stop the behemoths from chasing after us. How do we get rid of the smell? Blair's voice broke the tense silence between the two. Lucius rudely shrugged Roger away, then looked at Blair with a poker face. 
The smell of the Beast King's egg will naturally dissipate after a month. Roger cast a sidelong glance at Lucius. Then, in an attempt to suck up to her, he walked over to Blair and sat down with his long and thick tail curled around her hand. I knew it. How could there be a beast tide during this season? You stole the Beast King's egg and even hit Blair's head with it. Do you know that you almost killed her? Roger roared indignantly. Lucius looked down at the ground, not saying a word. Blair quickly tried to ease the situation. But I'm okay in the end, aren't I? If not for Lucius, I'd still be with Stephen. Roger's tail tightened around Blair's hand, which had been placed by her side. His eyes turned red as he said, If there was a risk of you dying, I'd rather you stay with that snake beast man and live a good life. Blair was surprised. She smiled and replied, What matters is that I'm fine now. I haven't eaten for a few days now and I'm starving. Can you find me something to eat? Roger immediately agreed. Okay, I'll go right now. Lucius interrupted, saying, I'll go. I'm faster. I'll feed my female myself, Roger said. He then stood up and transformed into a leopard. Lucius looked at Roger with contempt. When you're done climbing down the cliff, I would have already returned with food. Stay here and protect the female. I'll go hunt. Although Roger was indignant, he thought that what Lucius said made sense. He anxiously dug into the ground with his hind legs, not saying a word. Blair smiled at Lucius and said, I'll have to trouble you again then. Lucius glanced at Blair before turning around and transforming into a black eagle. He then spread his wings and flew off. Roger turned around and pounced on Blair. His limbs were placed on either side of her legs as he forcefully rubbed his head against her abdomen. Blair couldn't help but laugh. She poked Roger's forehead and said, You're such a huge cat. How could they copulate? Roger was like a man-child. He was too immature to marry someone. Why don't you be my older brother? (laughs) She laughed at herself and continued. That makes it seem like I'm taking advantage of you. I eat your food and stay in your house, and I even sleep in your bed. Roger sneezed, indicating that he wasn't willing to do that. He then enthusiastically licked Blair's exposed navel to show her how fond he was of her. For some reason, Blair was able to understand all of the leopard's body language. She panicked slightly. Although it didn't hurt when the leopard licked her abdomen, it felt itchy and caused Blair to move away. Her heart ached upon seeing that Roger's eyes were bloodshot. You must be tired. Sleep for a bit. 